Today, uh, I'd like for us to uh, look at uh, a topic entitled uh, Light light and Darkness. Light and Darkness. Let's close our eyes and pray. Thank you, Father, for this time, this opportunity for us to open up your word. Thank you, Father, for uh, giving us the opportunity to have a place to meet. I pray, Father, during this time that may your spirit be here. If your spirit is not among us, Father, then there's to all of this. We need you to be here, Father, and work in our hearts and give us understanding. May your will be done, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. Okay, so light and darkness. So, of course, in order for us to look at this topic, we first of all need to look at uh, light and, and, and what the word means as well as darkness. So, um, darkness is the easier one to define because darkness is the absence of light. Right, so that's the easy, easier one to define, so we'll start with that. And then light, the word light is more complicated because it has quite several meanings. Right? The word light has several meanings, or rather I should say several usages. You can use light to mean the opposite of dark. You can use the word light to mean the opposite of heavy. And you can also use light to mean... Um, knowledge or understanding. Have you ever heard someone say, enlighten me? What they, are, what they mean by that is, give me some knowledge, you know, give me some understanding about what's going on. So that word can have those three uh, main usages, but uh, the interesting thing, was, which, which is what sparked this up, by the way, is that uh, as we were working on the renovations in the building, uh, this week the, the main task was filling in the holes on the floor. Uh, so that we can paint next week. So we were filling in the holes and, uh, you know, there were three sets of eyes, right? So that's six eyes, right? There were six eyes looking at the floor, looking for little holes and looking for certain things, pieces of dirt that can be scraped off the floor. And all six eyes, after a couple of minutes, couldn't see anything else that needed to be fixed. But then we came back later, after the stuff we were using to fill the holes, we came back later uh, to clean up. And now, because it was later in the day, the sun was shining in through the door and there was more light in the building. And we saw a lot of stuff that we missed. We saw a lot of holes, we saw a lot of things that needed to be scraped off. So what, what does that teach us? Or rather, what does that remind us of? That reminds us that light Light will show you certain, certain blemishes that exist. Light will reveal certain imperfections. Light will reveal things that you've missed out. That's the thing about light. If you, if you, if you, if you put light upon something, you, you tend to see things more clearly, and that clearer vision will show you all the things that are not right. So that, 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 that of course, uh, is something that we need to consider about light, and uh, we'll, we'll come back to that, but we just, let's just shortly also bring to our attention that God sees everything. God sees everything. There is nothing that is hidden from the sight of the Lord. Once again, you think that light, for us as human beings, we need the presence of light in order for us to see things clearly. And that's just only on the outside. But God, however, can see everything because God is everywhere at all times. And even when you do something in the dark, He still sees it. Even when you do something undercover, He still sees it. God sees all of that, and we need to first of all know and understand that before we can continue with this lesson. So I'll start by reading for you from Isaiah chapter 139. Chapter, Isaiah chapter 139, I'll just read quickly through this because I just want to remind you of this is a very popular scripture, so I'm sure we all are aware of it. So uh, this verse 1 of Isaiah 39 says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. This is what David said. Verse 2, thou knowest my downsitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. So 
So we see here that uh, one of the usages of the word light is to have understanding or knowledge, right? En enlighten me. Enlighten me. So God is an enlightened person. God has all the knowledge about you. The Bible says here yeah, for, for David for one, he said, Lord, you have searched me and known me. So one thing we know for sure is that if you, if you have been born again, uh, God, God spends the time to search your heart and to know you. To really know who you are. But then because he's also, he's God, and that God is omniscient, He also knows you if you're not saved. He, he, he knows your heart, He, he knows your, your personality, and He understands your thoughts afar off. God, God, God sees everything, even our thoughts. And then uh, I'll, I'd like to read for you as well, verse 11. If I say, truly darkness, shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. So here, David says that if I say, surely, sorry, um, I think, did I say the wrong reference? It's Psalms 139. <laughs> what, what did I say? <laughs> so, I'm so sorry. I, I was wondering why I kept hearing painting for so long. I, I, I'm sorry. Psalms, Psalms 139. Uh, I, my apologies for that. Uh, Psalms 139, verse 1. I'll read that again. I'm so sorry. Yeah. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsetting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thanks, sir. So now we're looking at uh, verse 11. If I say, surely darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. So I was, I was talking about how even if we can say that we will we'll do something in darkness or we'll do something undercover, God sees all of that. You know, sometimes we feel better about sin when no one sees us. Have you noticed how a lot of people like to do uh, the, the partying and all of that at night? You know, parties usually like happen late in the night. Because people, the way people act at parties and the way people dress at parties they think that because it's dark, they won't be seen. Or, or rather, they'll only be seen by the people that they want to be seen by. But because it's darker, sometimes darkness does give you that comfort when you're doing something wrong. That oh, since it's dark, no one can see me. And, then, and also, a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of sin happens at night. If you think about all the partying that happens at night, a lot of the, the theft happens at night. A lot of the looting, when that was happening, it would happen at night. So you see how all these things, people tend to do them at night. And usually at night, people act worse than they would during the day. Because it's all about, oh, if, if, if no one can see me, then I feel better about doing this. But here's the truth, that God can see. God sees all of that. The Bible says, Paul, sorry, David here says that, the night, sorry, light and darkness are alike to thee. When you do something in darkness, in God's eyes, it's as if you're doing it in broad daylight. That's how clearly he sees it. And you shouldn't be concerned. That just shows how sometimes our, our understanding about things is a bit twisted. Because why would you not want to do something wrong and just not want to be seen by the person next to you? next to you. The person next to you is not going to be your judge. And don't people like to always remind you that? You, you, you don't judge me. You can't judge me. People like to remind everyone that the people around them cannot judge them. 
But then they, whenever they doing something wrong, they only think of hiding it from the people around them and forget that the person who's the actual judge sees it. So God sees everything. To him, there is light everywhere. And he sees everything clearly. And we need to uh, think about uh, how, how, how the light affects us. In each and every one of us here today, we are affected by the light. And light for one, for those that are not saved, light is important for salvation. Let, let me uh, read for you from Acts, Acts chapter 13. I hope this time I said the right word. It's Acts, right? <laughs> Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, verse 47. So, uh, Paul and Barnabas, this is uh, basically speaking about Paul and Barnabas, of which the Jews during this time were rejecting their, their preaching, so to speak. Verse 47 says, for so hath the Lord command, command, commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. So here with Paul and Barnabas, the Jews were rejecting the truth, basically. And, and here, uh, basically, Paul and Barnabas, the Lord, told, the Lord told Paul and Barnabas that I have said to thee, since the Jews rejected my word, I have said to thee to be a light unto the Gentiles, so that thou can be, as, so that thou can be unto salvation. So what he's saying, basically, is that the Gentiles need to be saved. And what do they need in order for them to be saved? They need light. And I'm setting you to be the light of the Gentiles. And if we, if we think of all, all, all the, well, all, most of the usages of the word light, what God was telling them is you need to go to the Gentiles so that you can enlighten them, so that you can give them knowledge and understanding about the word of God. Because if you want to be saved, you need to first of all understand the word of God, at least what God says about salvation. You need to understand that you need to have the knowledge, which is why um, most of the time uh, people will get saved when they reach the age when they can start to understand instruction. And that is also the age when you become accountable for sin before God. I was asked this question recently, uh, but a, a baby, a little child, when a little child dies, they go to heaven. They go to heaven because they are not accountable for their sins. They are not accountable if, if a little baby steals something. He, he, the baby doesn't even know what stealing is. God will not hold the baby accountable for that. But as soon as a person knows what right and wrong is, they become accountable. And that's also usually when their brain has developed enough for them to understand what the Bible says about salvation. So this is a very key thing. In order for people to be saved, there has to be light. There has to be people who will go and give these people understanding and knowledge. If you have been saved, you are to be the light of the world. You are to go and give people understanding of the word of God. You are to go and teach people. Uh, of course, the Lord gives uh, people certain responsibilities, especially in a church. But if there's one responsibility that we all share in common, is that we all need to be the light of the world. We all need to give people understanding. And then another thing about light is it reveals certain shortcomings. So when, when God sent Paul and Barnabas to be the light unto the Gentiles, he wanted them to go and reveal the blemishes that they had in what they believed. If you have been born again, you need to be a good testimony because that is how you reveal things that are wrong in other people. And I'll give this example because it's the most common one with this. But uh, have, have you ever been around someone who likes swearing, using vulgar language? I have. 
fact, uh, he is uh, someone I used to stay with was like that. You know, the type of person who he swears in almost every sentence he says. I don't know if you've met people like that, but I, I, I'm not even exaggerating. Almost every sentence he says will have at least one swear word. Then, you know, depending on how angry he is, the, the density of swear words, the, the density of swear words per sentence tends to increase until the whole sentence is just swear words concurrently. Right? So there, there are people like that, and and uh, what I've noticed is, uh, and it's, it's happened even to me, and I've heard some of you say the same thing uh, in your lives, that when you're around people who like swearing, they tend to, after they swear, they say, oh, sorry, sorry, because right? they know that you don't do and, and, and that, show, that shows being a light because you're revealing that swearing is wrong. Using vulgar language is wrong. So when people feel wrong swearing around you, that's a good sign. It means you're being a light. And, um, you know, with, with, that, with that type of, of language as well, the people around you will tell the difference. Yeah, here's, here's something else that I also want you to remember from today. Is that light shines brighter in a place when it is dark. You know, if you take a matchstick right now, I've tried this many times, but I think you might have too. If you take a matchstick and you light it up right now outside during the day, you won't see the flame. But the flame is still there. But if you light that same matchstick at night when the sun has set, you'll see that flame even from a distance. So the light shines brighter in a place when it is dark. And this world, brethren, is getting darker and darker. The world is, is decaying. People's standards are getting lower and lower. That's something that could discourage you at first sight, but it should encourage you too because it means the light will shine brighter. I'll give you an example even with the swearing thing. That, that, that guy that I used to know that used to like swearing, his friends, when I was around his friends and I was saying something, one of his friends once said, you know what, it's so refreshing to listen to someone that doesn't swear so much. He literally said that. So there will be the difference. When you are around people who are doing something that is wrong, don't conform to it. Conform to what the Lord wants you to do and rather be a light in a darkened world. But uh, light is necessary for salvation. While we're in Acts, let's turn a few pages back and go to Acts chapter 9. Because you cannot speak about light without looking at this testimony, right? When, when Paul got saved, in Acts chapter 9, just before he got saved, in, in, I'll, I'll read for you uh, verse 3. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a, a, there shined round about him a light from heaven. He fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. So this is what happened when Paul got saved. As he was traveling to Damascus, and Paul was a person who was very religious. And from his religion, he was persecuting the church of God. He was persecuting the Lord's church. And, and as he was traveling, he thought he was doing the right thing. Right? And then and, and here's, here's one of the, 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 the interesting lessons about Paul's testimony, which also links it up to the way things are done today. When there's truly light, you know, some people are in the darkness and, they're, and they think they're doing the right thing. But when the true light comes, it will reveal everything. You will clearly see what is right and what is wrong. Paul was persecuting the Lord's church and he thought he was doing it for God. But then when the light came and it shined right round about him, I like how the Bible says that round about him, there was, there was not, there was, I believe that there was no part of his body that was not engulfed in light. And that's also figurative, I believe, because it wasn't, it wasn't about his outward body, it was his heart that God wanted to illuminate. 
and show him the things about his heart that were not right. And Paul needed that in order for him to be saved. He needed the light to shine on his, on his heart, to show him the imperfections, to show him the things that are not right, the things that he's missing in his life. He was missing Jesus Christ. as he was persecuting his church. And, and, and the interesting thing here as well is he, he, Jesus says to him, it is hard for you to kick against the pricks. You know, sometimes even when you're a religious person, you know you're religious but lost, it is hard for you to kick against the pricks. It's hard for you to live a, a religious life yet still reject Jesus Christ. But if you come to the light, it becomes easy. Remember, Jesus said his yoke is light and it's easy. But uh, th th that is what happened to Paul. And uh, people tend to avoid the light. People tend to avoid the light. People tend to avoid a situation like the one that Paul had to experience. Why is that? That's because people don't like to be corrected. People, people want to always be right. And then sometimes they feel it's, it's embarrassing when you get corrected. Why does, it shouldn't be that way. Let, let me challenge you today. If you're that type of person that doesn't want to be corrected, think about if that character is helping you or it's destroying you. Because here's one thing that's for sure, you're not always right. In fact, I, I believe, I, I myself look at myself this way. I have been wrong more times than I've been right. No one is always right. So I'd like to challenge you today, accept correction Wow. If someone corrects you, that's a friend. He's wanting you to do better. He's wanting you to not make the same mistakes. So accept correction Wow. Remember, the Bible says it too, that the, the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. But the wounds of a friend are something else. <laughs> so, so it's just uh, faith, faithful are the wounds of a friend, yeah. but the kisses of the enemy are deceitful. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's easier when you go to the right way. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right, yeah, it's probably not hundred percent accurate, but that was the second try was closer. Uh, so, so a, fr a true friend. A true friend will want to correct you, even though that will feel like a wound, it will feel a bit painful. But a, a friend, a friend, uh, sorry, an enemy will want to make you feel like you're doing the right thing, even when it's wrong. So, so be careful about that. Be, be careful about that. And um, I accept correction well. But however, people try to avoid the light because they don't want to be corrected. And let's close by looking at John. Let's turn to John chapter 3. <clears throat> In John chapter 3, verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. That the light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, yet lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. So that, that, that's where it is. Jesus Christ here is teaching about the same thing, about how people don't like to be corrected. You know, there are some people who will avoid going to church. There are some people who will avoid listening to preaching. Why? Because they don't want to be corrected. They don't want to make, be made to feel like they are wrong. And the reason for that is because their deeds are evil. If you like darkness rather than light, it shows that your deeds are evil. 
And then it's so sad that the natural tendency of man is to run away from the light and go to darkness so that they may not be reproved. But if you come to Jesus Christ, one thing is for sure, Jesus Christ is the light. Jesus Christ is the light. Uh, in fact, it says that here in, in John, um, uh, I, I, it's, it's in John chapter 1, sorry. In John chapter 1, verse uh, 8, uh, or rather let me read um, from verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and, dark, and darkness comprehended it not. Verse, verse 4 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus Christ is that light. And when speaking about John in verse 7, the Bible says, The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. You see, capital L, capital L. The light that all men through him might believe. He was not that, that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Jesus Christ is the light. And if you want to be saved, you need to come to Jesus Christ, which means you will be coming to the light. Which means what will Jesus Christ do? Jesus Christ will reveal to you all the things that are wrong in your life. He will reveal to you all the little holes and all the blemishes and all the bad things that are in your heart. He will be that light. And that is where you'll have a choice to make. You have a choice to either repent or forsake Him. When Jesus Christ brings to life those things in your life that are not right, you have that choice to make. Will you repent of your sins? Say, Lord, I see now that I am wrong. I see now that I've been doing the wrong thing. I've been going the wrong direction. I thought I was right. But I see now that I was wrong. Please forgive me. I no longer want to go this way. I want to go the right way. You have made it clear to me. The light has, has, has shone on my life. And I see the wrong path and the right path. I, I want to take the right path. If you make that decision, the Lord will save you. If you repent of your sins. But uh, people who choose darkness rather than light. Jesus said, they are condemned already. Already. As we speak, if you reject Jesus Christ, you are condemned already. You have that choice to make. There's light and there's darkness. You may choose to do things in darkness undercover or for this short period of time, but there will be a time when everything will be made known. Everything will be brought to light. And you'll have to stand before God, naked. Remember that on Judgment Day, we'll all stand naked before God. Which means that God will see everything. There'll be nothing to hide. There's light, there's light and there's darkness. Which one will you choose? Let's close our eyes and pray. Thank you, Father, for what you have taught us today about light and darkness. Father, I thank you for giving us the light. Thank you for giving us understanding and knowledge. And I thank you, Father, also that you shine the light upon our hearts and upon our lives. I pray, Father, that when you do shine the light upon our lives and it reveals things about our, our lives, our attitudes, our hearts, our thinking, when you reveal those things that are wrong, Father, that we may have the attitude to repent of our sins. I pray, Father, that we may submit ourselves to you. I pray, Lord, that we may receive correction from you. Father, I'd like to pray also for those that are saved. I pray, Father, that we may be the light of the world. May we do deeds that are right and deeds that are pure so that we may also come to the light that our deeds may be manifest that they are brought in you. I pray, Father, that you may use those that are the light of the world to share
child 